One of the characteristics of successful traders is that they're prepared. They're prepared to trade and they know what to look for and where to look for it and they know where to get their information. One of the places, one of the best places to get information is in the economic calendar. And let me show you what I mean. You're looking at the one day candle of the S&P, not the E-mini, but the S&P. And you'll notice the candles are red, the candles are green, but they all have certain characteristics. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. But the first thing that I wanted to tell you is that in order to be successful, you need to be prepared. And one of the best ways of being prepared is to know what announcements are going to be scheduled before they actually happen so that you know that there is going to be or might be a market reaction at that time and for what purpose. So for that, I'm going to use the example of MarketWatch's economic calendar. And you see it in my screen and I pull up the week's major U.S. economic reports and Fed speakers. And it gives a weekly summary, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and this is the week beginning Monday, April 15th. And you'll notice that there are a number of announcements, both pre and during market hours, regular trading hours, and some of these are inconsequential. They're not going to have much of an effect, if any, on market, on, the, on moving the market. But then there are some that you really have to know to be prepared for. And for instance, here's one right over here. On Tuesday, April 16th, at 1.15 p.m., the Fed Chair Jerome Powell speaks. Now, when the Fed Chair speaks, you always want to listen. You always want to know about it because Fed Chair uh, pron pronunciations can be major market-moving events. Now, there's also pre-market on Monday, April 15th, New York Fed President John Williams makes a TV appearance. And of course, that's pre-market. And so it's not going to affect your regular trading, at least if you're trading regular market hours as I do. So that is how you be prepared by knowing the announcements that are going to happen during the trading day, during the trading week, when they're going to happen and whether they're going to have the potential of moving the market such as when the Federal Reserve Chairman speaks, or when major Labor Department announcements come out. So now, let's go back to the one-day candle of the S&P. Some are red, some are green, indicating up days, down days. But what do these candles have in common? Very little in terms of telling you where the market is going to go, before the, the candle actually prints. But the one characteristic that every candle has in common is that they all have a beginning and an end. Every candle has a beginning and an end. Now, here's an example of how you can use this information to trade more successfully. If you can find the beginning of the candle, you can find or at least try to determine where the other end of the candle is. So how do you do that? Well, you do it by trying to determine where the intraday high or low is. Now, it's not easy, and I'm going to use this example on Thursday, April 11th. But of course, this doesn't work every day. But nevertheless, it's one way of showing where the market is going to trade. The market started out right about over here at 52.18, and I have the couple of uh, my indicators uh, on the chart. I have my stochastic at the bottom, and I have the previous day's close, the black horizontal line, and I have the Taylor trading zone that I've calculated the day before. And the Taylor trading zone uh, gave me figures of resistance at 52.20, support at 51.78. So let's say it's 9.30 or just before 9.30. The market is trading up here toward the top end of the Taylor trading zone. And the market opens up right over here at 52.18, just below the top of the trading zone, just below resistance. 
And so it reaches up to resistance in the first opening candle at 9.30. And then trades down, trades down, trades down to the, app, to the previous day's close, which is always equilibrium. And then trades down from there. So where is the other end of the candle? Where, was the, where is the beginning of the candle? Well, as you can see, the, the candle, or the market rather, prices opened up right at the top of the calculated trading zone, which again is an indicator, it's a tool. And so where will the market go? Well, I have to make an assumption. And I make an assumption around 10, 10.30, make an assumption that the market is has put in an intraday high over here. And so that's the top of my candle. So I want to know where the other end of the candle is. Well, today, and I'm using this as a simple example for those of you who are not, who, who are not uh, uh, experienced in the Taylor trading technique, the Taylor trading technique calculates a range that the market is likely to trade on any given day. And I take the intraday high, which I've made an estimate, and I use the Taylor trading zone, and I calculate or at least I estimate, that the market is going to trade somewhere around here, down to 51.79. Now, nothing is, 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 is exact. I'm giving you exact numbers. But nevertheless, nothing is exact. But still in all, I'm using the information of what is the one characteristic of all candles. And that is they have a beginning and an end. And so if you know how to watch for the intraday high or low, and you know how to calculate the Taylor's trading zone for that day, you know where the market may trade at the other end of the candle, where the other end of the candle is. And of course, you can use your stochastics as I do. If I want to jump off early, or if I'm leery about the market actually going down to where the trading zone calculates it will go down to. So that's a suggestion of how to trade how to trade more successfully. And of course, there are many ways to trade. This is not a scalping technique. And I have nothing against scalping. And for that, I'm particularly, uh, I particularly like the uh, stochastic and I use a relatively fast stochastic. But notice I don't use any other indicators, but that's just me. You can use whatever indicators you feel comfortable with. So that's my video for today. I'm Marv Eisen for Timeless Dollar Trading Academy. If you'd like to know a little more about how I trade and how I teach trading, visit my site at TimelessDollar.com and you'll see the range of courses that I offer, the Taylor Trading Calculator, and one particular course that's absolutely free is how to spot and avoid the tricks and the traps that cause costly trading mistakes. Thanks so much for watching. Trade safely, use lots of patience, and I'll see you in my next video.